Hey, everybody. Hey, what's up, Rudy? Is Kelly around? Oh, she's upstairs in her dressing room. When you see her, can you just tell her that her vacation is officially official? Did something happen with her getting her vacation time? Well, Mr. Wheeler wanted to see what our theme is for next week, just to be sure Lisa's not going to have too much overtime to do. If one of the girls is gone, the other one's got to do double duty. Oh, yeah. When I mean, one of the guys takes a week off, there's still two of us left. Well, maybe one day we'll get a third actress. Oh, that'd be good. I don't know if we're there yet. Although our attendance is pretty good and steady. Yeah, it seems like the Friday shows are catching up with the Saturday ones. So adding a third actress would be a good idea. What do you think, Lisa? Oh, I don't know. I kind of like being the female center of attention half the time. <laughs> oh, is that so? Well, then I bet Kelly likes to be the center of attention the other half. Uh-huh. <laughs> so if we did get a third actress, that means each of you would get attention only one-third of the time. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to conclude that Lisa is joking. You are joking, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so where's Kelly going on vacation? I don't know. She didn't say. I think she should go to Australia. It's only like a 15-hour flight from there. Which means about the time she gets off the plane, it'll be time to turn around and get back on the plane to come home. <laughs> well, then I think she should go to Jamaica, man. The weather there is perfect this time of year and all. I think she should go to Mexico. It's a lot to see south of the border, man. Hey, that was pretty good, Rude. Gracias, amigo. Well, since you're all having her go overseas, I think she should go to London. And I think I should go with her. I think I should go with you too, miss. Me too, man. Well, wait a minute. If everybody goes with her, who's going to be here to do the show? Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey. Hey, Lisa. Well, you have got everybody wondering where you're going on vacation next week. Yeah? Yeah, you should hear them down there. Let's see, they've got you going to Australia, Jamaica, Mexico, oh, and England. Oh, I would love to go to England. That'd be a lovely trip. Why, yes, it would. And if you should decide to go, I must go with you. We must plan a trip there, old friend. Oh, yes, we must. But I don't believe that a week overseas will be long enough. I believe I'll have to go down under. Down under? Yeah, to Florida to see Andy. <laughs> well, that's nice. I'm happy for you. Yeah, it'll be really good to see her again. But you can only go on one condition. What's that? You come back. Please don't leave me here alone. <laughs> don't worry, I won't. Okay, so Travis can play the new CEO. Kelly can play the new vice president. I will play the doctor, and Gates can play the CEO who dies. What? What? What are you talking about? Oh, it's my scene for the show. Yeah, I know that. What's it about? It's about... You'll see. Chad? Well, it's not done yet, and I still want Rudy to take a look at it and make sure that it's all right. Can I see what you have so far? Well, it's, it's not done yet. Can I see what you do have done? Okay. Gates is laying on a bed in a hospital room. Travis and Kelly come in, they start to have a conversation. Hey, Trev. Hey, Gates. How's it going? Doing good. Hey, I get to play a role in this week's show that I've never played before in the history of my acting career. Oh, yeah? Yep. Now, I've acted in a lot of plays, portrayed a lot of different characters, various roles, people from all walks of life. But I have never, ever played the role I'm going to play in this week's show. Oh, you got my curiosity. What role is this? I get to play a man who dies. Oh, really? Yep. Chad just told me. Now, we're going to have a problem with the audience when I do this scene. Problem with the audience? Absolutely. And why is that? Travis, did you not hear what I just said? Yeah. John Gates is going to play a man who dies. Which means? Which means that we're going to hear a lot of sniffles in the audience. And I'm mainly talking about the ladies. <laughs> so the ladies are going to cry when you die. See, you knew it because you just said it. Now, we need to tell Rudy to have some tissues in the lobby after the show. Oh, absolutely. We're going to need cases of them. There you go. Now, let's see. Got five shows with about 200 people per show. Take away a few for the Friday shows. That could be 900 people or more 
Now, how many boxes do you think we need? Oh, I don't think this city's big enough. We might have to call in for extra supplies. Now you're talking. Yeah, well, so, uh, what's the special occasion for where you get to, uh, you know, what happens? Oh, well, I get to play a big time CEO of a large corporation. And? And I die. Of course, I don't get to wear my nice suit because I'll be lying in a hospital bed. Where are we going to get a hospital bed? I don't know. That's for you and Rudy to figure out. Huh. I better go tell Rudy to order those tissues. Okay, well, it looks like we're going to close the show this week with Chad's scene, which is something we haven't done before. It should be interesting. Yeah, this will be a first. First what? First time Gates has done a scene without any lines. I beg your pardon, I have lines. Oh, that's right. You have a line. <laughs> which I say several times. Look, Kelly. And I will say this as humbly as I possibly can. Even without lines, I would do my best to not steal the scene from you guys. Listen to him. I don't think Rudy is referring to the fact whether or not Gates has any lines or not. I think it's the fact that Gates is gonna be passing away on stage is the first time we've ever done that. I know. Yes, this is the first time anyone's died on stage. I wanna be sure we do this well. Chad's written a serious piece here. We know, Rudy. Oh, you did order the truckload of tissues, right? Two of them, just to be sure. Good thinking. Okay, well, I'll get the line up to you tomorrow, and then we'll start working on the set for that final scene. Oh, and speaking of set, how am I going to get a hospital bed in here? I have the foggiest notion. I was hoping you had some idea. Sorry, Rudy, but I don't think I have any hospital beds in the back room. Well, we'll have to figure out something. Oh, don't worry, you two. Hospital bed or no hospital bed, just make sure you've got those hankies handy. <laughs> Hey, Joanna, did anybody call back about that hospital bed? No, not yet. Nobody? No, not a one. Who knew that finding a hospital bed would be so complicated? I know. <laughs> hey, I could call some nursing homes and see if they have one we could borrow. That's a great idea. Do you mind? No, not at all. I mean, it's kind of funny you think about the different props we have to come up with each week. I know. <laughs> I mean, Travis usually makes everything, but... You two are pretty handy when it comes to building makeshift sets and props and things. Well, we really need to find this one, because I don't want Gates having to have his big moment in a sleeping bag. <laughs> hey, Travis. Hey. Uh, listen, I was going to ask you if, if... I had any ideas of how to make a hospital bed for Gates' big scene. You got it. I thought Rudy was going to get one. He's been trying, man. He's been calling all over town today, and nobody has one that we can borrow, so... Looks like you're going to have to make one. Sure, Chad, I'd love to make a hospital bed for you, but I'm not sure I could make one big enough to fit old Gates. Uh, what was that? Oh, I just said I would love to make a bed for uh, Gates' big old scene that he's getting ready to do for Chad. <laughs> That's what I thought you said. So, no hospital bed yet, huh? I'm afraid not. Hmm. Well, Travis, looks like you're gonna have to make something that looks like a hospital bed. Now, how am I gonna do that? I don't know, but I die in a few days, so you better come up with something. Hey, Travis. Uh, I want to go ahead and get set up for a run-through tomorrow for the hospital scene. Uh, I need to check the lighting and see what sound effects we need to come up with. Uh, hospital room sounds like in the TV shows. Uh, we've struck out getting a hospital bed in here, unfortunately. Have you got any other ideas? Uh, well, nothing off the top of my head, but I'll put something together for you. Well, I'm going to round up some bed linens and see what other hospital supplies I can come up with. Sounds good, Rudy. And Gates, what kind of sounds are you talking about for a hospital room? I don't know. Hospital room sounds like in the TV shows. Lisa, do you know what he's talking about? No, not at all. But you know they're not gonna hear those sounds anyway. Why is that? Because they'll all be crying about Mr. Gates and, you know. <laughs> Hey, Gates. What do you think? 
What is it? I mean, what is it? It's a trampoline. What do you think it is? <laughs> is this supposed to be my hospital bed? Uh, no, this is your sofa sleeper. <laughs> yes, this is your hospital bed. But it doesn't look like a hospital bed. Well, that's because I'm not done with it. It's a work in progress. Well, I hope so. You just make sure you know all your lines. I don't have but one. Do you know it? Of course I know it. But now if it'll give you peace of mind, I'll go and study it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Gates, it's going to be a lot of fun watching you lay down on this thing. All of us looking down at you, talking about what a great guy you were. I'll try to lie, but it'll be hard. What was that? Uh, I just said it'll be hard trying to lie down on this thing. But if anybody would try, it'd be you. Uh, <laughs> very funny. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. You know what? Kelly is going to see Andy next week on her vacation. Is she? Yep. Well, that sounds like fun. You know, I still miss Andy. Yeah, me too. But you know, Lisa's done a great job, and I'm glad we got her. Yes, yeah, she has. You know, Gates, I know we've been joking about this scene all week, but this is really no joking matter. No, I know. I mean, here you'll be on your deathbed, and I just hope I don't get all choked up. I mean, if the Lord really did take you away from here, I'd really miss you, my man. Thanks, Travis. I appreciate that, brother. Yeah, and I've also been thinking that this is a very serious scene that we're going to do here. As serious as we've ever done. Yeah, it is. I just hope that God uses it. Yeah. Well, dress rehearsal today. First show tonight. Yeah, okay. We go in a few minutes. Is everybody ready? Yeah, we're ready. Just listen for your cue. You got it, man. Kate, you wouldn't believe how many women are in the audience tonight for the first show. What well, is it packed, Rudy? I guess the word must have gotten out. Well, you got the tissues, right? Got a box at every seat. <laughs> Smart man. Listen to him. Okay, guys. God bless. Thanks, Rudy. Look, guys. Uh, Travis and I were talking this morning. We were kind of joking about the scene that Chad wrote, but you know, it's it's a pretty serious scene, and I want to take a moment to pray and ask. Ask the Lord to use it, okay? Absolutely, okay. All right. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for allowing us to be here. And we ask that you, that you would bless us tonight in our efforts to do our best in the show. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you would speak to the hearts of the people out there who need to know you as Lord and Savior. We pray that tonight would be the night that they would enter into a true personal relationship with you. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, Gates. Thanks, man. He doesn't look very good. No, he doesn't. I never thought we'd see this day when the CEO of one of the world's largest corporations was lying on his deathbed. Yeah, you might be right. The doctor said he wasn't going to make it through the night. Well, that's why we're here. Pay our last respects. I wonder where his family is. They just went down the hall to get something to eat. I asked the nurse. When he dies? You'll be the new CEO, and I'll be the new vice president. Well, don't get any ideas of me turning in early. I may not look fit, but I'm in tip-top shape. Is that so? Yes, that's so. I just had my annual checkup, and with the exception of a few pounds, a few, mind you, the doc said I'm in good shape. <laughs> I'm not hoping that you die early. This is just so strange seeing Mr. Johnson lie there. He lived a life of luxury. Had it made when his father left everything to him. Well, one thing I can say about him is he was an honest man. I never knew him to do anything wrong to anybody in all the years we worked together. I agree. I saw his tax returns every year. They always looked to be in proper order. Well, he was smart. I mean, he really knew his stuff. I mean, I know the job was handed to him, but in all honesty again, he was the best man for the job. He knew this business better than anybody. I agree. I always respected him for his intelligence. Yes, 
Very knowledgeable. And kind. He could have been a very difficult man to work with, but he never was. He could have been prideful and arrogant. But he was always so kind. Yeah, he was kind to everybody. I never knew him to have a crossword with a soul. I guess you could say he lived a very good life. Yes, he did. He had more money than any man could ever want. A wife and four kids that loved him, he loved his employees, and he had the reputation of being an honest man. Plus, he worked hard at his job. Yes, he did. But none of that matters now. If the doctor's right, he's not going to live to see the morning. Nope. Doesn't matter now. And there he lies on his deathbed. A bed that awaits all of us one day. Here we are in perfect health, watching him take his last breath. And when he dies, we'll move up in the business world. Something we've spent most of our adult life working toward. You can say that again. I practically live at the office. I don't have a wife. Wouldn't have time to find one even if I wanted to. You don't even talk to me about a relationship. I am married to that office. But Mr. Johnson seemed to manage things well. He's just as busy as we were. But he still found time to spend with his family. He did a lot of things with those kids. I don't think he missed one thing they ever did. No, he didn't. I always wondered how he managed his time. He was either an incredibly efficient worker, or he had someone helping him on the side. He probably had someone helping him. But he was smart, never let on about it. So we never knew. Probably right. But it doesn't matter now. No, it doesn't. You know, I always admired Mr. Johnson, even though I didn't know him very well. I only knew him as my CEO. One thing I always thought about him was that he had it made. He did. He was everything a man would want to be in life. He had it all. I think he's waking up. You must. Do you know what he just said? What did you say? You must. Mr. Johnson, are you all right? Can we get you something? You must. Maybe we should call the doctor. I'll press that button there. What are you trying to say? What is he saying? I don't know. You must. What? I can't understand you. What is he saying? I can't make it out. I think he just died. We think this man just died. He kept trying to tell us something. Yeah, he kept saying something like, you must. That was it. It sounded like he was saying, ye must. You must. What does that mean? I understand. You do? Yes. Well, what was he trying to tell us? Last night, I shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with this man. And I told him that the entire Bible could be summed up in one verse. John chapter 3, verse 7, which says, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. 
And last night, this man believed in Jesus by faith, confessed his sins, accepted Christ into his life, and was born again. So why are you smiling? I mean, this man just died. I'm smiling because the Lord is so gracious that he gave this man one blessed day to share his faith.